first thing of the day, but if it is, welcome to season four of ATX Television Festival. This is the first time we've ever done a Friday night marquee event. Uh, this is usually we stick to opening night and closing night, but we just really felt like we had a little bit of room to grow and we wanted to sort of showcase things a little bit differently. So we're very excited this year um, to have FX back. They're one of our best partners. Last year's closing night was a huge success. So we thought we'd mix it up this year and bring in some comedies, feature a couple of different shows. So we're glad you're in for the long haul. We've got three shows. Um, but I wanted to introduce John Solberg from FX and tell you more about it. Thank you. How about a round of applause for Caitlin and Emily and everybody who works on the festival. They do an unbelievable job. Uh, last year we had a uh, closing night with the strain here and uh, it went so well that we wanted to take a full night this year. Hope we get a full night next year, the year after, and long after I'm gone. So uh, I'm a Texan, so I love being a, uh, here in Texas and it's great, but uh, we have a great night for FX Comedy Night. Uh, we have really, um, our comedy brand began with It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia back in 2005. And it took a while to kind of find that next wave, but it really hit in 2009 when we had uh, the League and Archer and Louie, and we just keep going and going and going. And, and a lot of credit goes to my boss, John Landgraf, who's really done an amazing job. And tonight, uh, we're going to introduce kind of the next generation and wave of FX comedies. Uh, what you're going to see first here is a comedy that we launched last year on FX. It's moving to FXX, and as uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia has two seasons left, and the league is going into its final season, uh, beginning in September. Uh, we really look to You're the Worst to be the next foundational block for FXX going forward for a long time. And uh, I'm 49, so I'm kind of on the outer edge of the demo, and, and John, when we, when we you know, when they do the pilots and they shoot the pilots and then we determine if they're gonna pick them up, you know, the department heads will get in a room and we're kind of like the first focus group. Well, when we went in for the year of the worst, uh, the focus group, John got a lot of coordinators and assistants and younger colleagues of ours to sit in there because he knew we were out of touch with this generation. And so uh, we screened it and after the screening we were going around and, and uh, they got to me and I looked at some of my younger colleagues and I'm like, do you guys really treat each other this way? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, it's great. And I'm like, holy shit, we're in trouble. Uh, but that's when I knew that Stephen Falk, who created the show, had really tapped into, you know, this millennial gener generation's uh, relationship show. Uh, it, it's honest, it's authentic, uh, it pulls no punches. His writing's amazing. The cast with Aya Cash and Chris Gear and Kether Donahue and Desmond Borges does an unbelievable job of bringing it to life. It's one of the funniest shows on television, and the best part about this is, you know, I don't think anybody had any great expectations for this show coming out, um, and and I and I mean that in a good way because sometimes with comedy, people like to discover, they like to find things, and. I'm happy to say that this was one of the most critically acclaimed shows on television last year. And to, what speaks to that is uh, it was the only first year show that was recently nominated for Outstanding Comedy Series by the Television Critics uh, for the Critics' Choice Awards. So we couldn't be more proud of this show. Uh, we've got a great panel for you. We've got the cast and it's going to be moderated by Leslie Goldberg of The Hollywood Reporter. So, with that, um, season two begins in early September on FXX. Uh, it's going to be paired with the league, and we are going to screen for you tonight last season one's finale, uh, Fist and Feed and Stuff. So with that, we present You're the Worst. You all ready for season two? Well, they just began production, and last season was 10 episodes. We love the show so much that season two, we're going to do 13 episodes. So, here we go. Uh, to moderate our panel and ask questions about last season and the coming season, we have the highly respected and well-regarded journalist and reporter from The Hollywood Reporter. Please welcome Leslie Goldberg. How about that? 
finale, huh? Yeah! Since its premiere last summer, You're the Worst has become one of the most critically praised new series on television. The offbeat comedy centers on Jimmy and Gretchen, a British novelist and a cynical publicist who find happiness in each other's awfulness. Uh, Jimmy and Gretchen have been described as one of TV's most watchable courtships, but they're equally misbehaving best friends, Edgar and Lindsay, creating a dynamic that's as delightful as breakfast nachos and trash juice. Uh, let's bring them out. Series creator, Stephen Falk. Jimmy and Gretchen, Aya Cash, and Chris Gear. The lovable Lindsay and Edgar, Kevin Donahue, and Desmond Borges. Crotchy, are we? <laughs> Stephen, let's start at the beginning. Um, where did the idea for your awards come from? Oh, gosh. I think, um, uh, well, you're the... <laughs> Uh, I always was, was a big fan of romantic comedies, like going way back, like John Hughes stuff. Um, I'm just kind of uh, mushy like that. I like really dumb movies. I saw San Andreas already uh, in the theaters. Paid a lot of money. Not very good, but I saw it. Um, but I also really am just kind of a mush pot, and um, and so I, I, you know, kind of grew up watching those. And, and I like to show called Mad About You, um, and just thought it was it was. It was touching and it was really well written and interplay. I just like the interplay between. I just remember thinking, oh, the interplay between them is like cool. Like that's kind of like, like relationship goals, isn't that a hashtag? Yeah. yeah. And um, and and I also then sort of really like British sitcoms because um, I liked that you could get away with doing a lot with the characters. You didn't. Have, there wasn't sort of this this focus on this kind of I think false buzzword likability um, and. So, so, so sort of this idea that I've always been churning was to do kind of a cably, Britishy, alcoholic, uh, mad about you. Um, and so that was sort of the genesis, and then and I'd come off a thing, and FX was looking for um, a show, and I pitched it this to them. Um, and what was that pitch meeting like? I mean, did you, how did you describe it? I mean, they, it's like, it's not a will they or won't they comedy. They obviously do in the pilot. Yeah, they bone in like the first three minutes, which uh, was important to me because I think it's, it's it's dangerous to go that, down that road using sort of that sexual tension as, as fuel because the fuel has to run out at some point. Because when they bone, then you no longer have that as a fuel source and then you're fucked. Um, uh, no, I mean, I went in and, and just sort of pitched it like that, pitched the characters, um, and, and, you know, kind of talked about sort of my personal, you know, relationship troubles and stuff like that uh, previously. and. Um, uh, and they were just really receptive to it, but I, but the kind of the idea came, kind of came out whole cloth. And for the cast, I mean, what was shooting that pilot like? You had to have instant chemistry, and yes, that is the drinking word, chemistry. You have to drink when, when Leslie says chemistry. Desmond is drinking my beer right now. <laughs> Sharing is. We were actually encouraged to go out and drink together, weren't we? Well, actually, so. Uh, Desmond, Aya, and myself uh, live in New York, and Chris lives in Manchester. And so a week before we shot the pilot, uh, Jordan, our director, and Stephen wanted us to come out a week early to LA to bond. And our bonding was drinking. <laughs> yeah. At a costumed Halloween party with masks and such. So we For were... UNICEF, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, so We didn't get to look into each other's eyes, but we toasted quite a bit. That you sound so sexy on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but what was the process of shooting the pilot? We did have an like, experience. Shooting the pilot. Stephen would like, like us so to stay on track. So the four, of us, the four of us came in relatively unknown actors, I suppose, um, all in a situation where we'd read this fantastic stri uh, script, wanted to do it justice, and yet were kind of terrified, A, you know, whether, whether we could do it. I think the whole time, you remember before the, the read-through, all of us were worried that we were going to get fired. Me and I thought we were fired <laughs> after the table read. We all went to In-N-Out because we figured we'd win, even if we lost. <laughs> so we all drew 
drove, we drove like from downtown to Hollywood to go to In and Out Burger because Kevin and I were so convinced we were going to get fired. If we were going to get fired, we were going to do it eating In and Out. Yeah, her, her agent called and she's like, "See, I'm getting the call already." Why did you think you were getting fired? Because everyone gets fired. No, but after the table, the table, no, no. The, the table read was me. Right? And the director. A lot of people would clip. And the writers. And you sit at the back, just like, hello, oh, I'm yeah. judging you. It's horrible. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't think I was getting fired. I thought I might get shit up. We're just insecure actors. <laughs> it's terrifying. I mean, in this business, it's actually not uncommon. As most of you probably know, it's not uncommon for actors to be let go after the table read. And even though Steven said multiple times, like, it's not like that at FX, we were like, yeah, okay, we'll see what happens afterwards. And I barely got the job in the first place, so I was particularly worried. Because FX had originally said, uh-oh, I'm, it's fine. Um, <laughs> FX had originally said no to me after I tested. Uh, they didn't think I was the right person for the job. And then Steven said, well, I do think she's the right person for the job. Give me one more shot with her. And then I retested in the Orange is the New Black, Black offices in New York, just me and Steven, where I told him I was going to leave acting and open an antique store upstate, which I thought was a, a good thing to tell someone who might give me a job. And, um, and then they eventually said yes, which actually is, it sounds like a bad story about FX, but it's actually a great story about FX because normally what a creator wants is not necessarily what a creator gets and FX is so supportive of their creators and their writers that they really believe in their vision and Stephen won. I thought he had no hope. I was like, yeah, I've been down this road before. It's Wouldn't nice. it be cool if like, you didn't get it but you ended up on Orange is the New Black instead? <laughs> Can I be on Orange is the yeah, New Black? I would, love, I would love to see you on that show. We all want to be on Orange is the New Black. Can I be on it? Hello, <laughs> I'm so sorry. We're sorry, Liza. We're all I guess. I have to admit, one of, one of my favorite chemistry. Things, <laughs> one of my favorite jo- things about this show is the chemistry drink um, between Ed- with Edgar and everyone. I mean, he's first of all, he's pretty much the least worst person on this show. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, I, I'm curious, you know, what kind of feedback have you got from the military community? about Edgar. I mean, he's just so, you don't really see that character. Oh, you can't sound sexy now, you gotta get serious. Oh, no, uh, um, it, it, it's a serious proximity away from my lips. Uh, no, it's been um, incredible what I've gotten from the military community. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to do this thing called Arms, um, Arts in the Armed Forces, sorry, Shinerbach. Um, <laughs> Uh, with uh, Adam Driver the uh, winter before we went to Germany and we performed on three different base camps and I was able to cultivate um, a few different relationships there that I continue to speak to those gentlemen and those vets till this day and they absolutely love the show Um, and it's just I don't know it's it's amazing to get to tell a different spin on a vet's journey because we don't often get to see someone who's so heartfelt and romantic and loyal and, as I like to call, the moral compass of the group. We had a really cool guy named Sergeant Adam Renteria come in and talk to us, uh, the writers, and Desmond when we were making the characters. We thought, well, we have a certain responsibility to get, you know, some of it right, at least, um, in terms of portraying a recent vet um, and their experience back home. And and there was a lot of takeaways, but the number one for me and the writers was, um, he was just like, we're just like, like, it's not all that, there's a lot of serious shit, but we just like, we make fun of each other and we like to have fun and, and like, just show that we're like, like normal people and we're fallible and, and we bust balls and shit, so that's what we try to do. Um, speaking of fallible, uh, Ketter, uh, Lindsay really, in that finale, she really spiraled, spiraled out of control with her, uh, pardon my language here, but uh, the cockaholism? Yeah. <laughs> Which I love. Um, pardon the pun, but uh, that came, really came to a head. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and obviously got to sing a great Kate Bush song. Um, what do you enjoy most about playing Lindsay? Lindsay is a dream role for me. It's honestly my favorite character I've ever played, and this is the best job I've ever had. Um, what I love about it is that you... I, hey, stop laughing. 
serious. I'm just waiting for the punchline. There's no punchline. Um, I get to uh, play broad comedy and say ridiculously funny lines, and I also get to play a complex character who experience, who's going through a very tragic journey, and so you kind of get to, you know, you get the best of both worlds. Are you gonna sing again? Yes. Say more. <clears throat> Steven, I literally like ask him every day, literally. I'm like, what am I singing? What am I? And he's like, stop nagging me. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm singing, but I am singing again. <laughs> my, kind of my favorite episode, I think I speak for a lot of people in this room, um, Sunday Fun Day. Um, absolutely perfect. Um, where did the idea for that episode come from, and have you thought about making that an annual event? Um, the idea came from just sort of writer's room uh, spinning our wheels. We didn't do it a lot, but that episode last season we got uh, we really got hung up on. Um, it was going to start with, um, we, we wanted to do like a five minute one um, down the street in LA, following this really good person as he like gives him like a sandwich to a homeless guy and like, um, like, like helps someone out outside this uh, a cafe with his chest move. And then he eventually gets on his bike, and then they hit him with their car after drinking all day. And it was going to be an episode of them covering up their drunk driving uh, vehicular manslaughter. Not they wouldn't kill him; he would just be like injured. Um, and that took, then somehow that morphed into just like um, them out in the world. And then I think I think we start to feel at a certain point that the first the pilot and the the, the first two episodes had sort of ended the first act, and we had an opportunity to start a sort of second act because we were doing 10 episodes. And then it would be nice to have sort of a fun episode. Just, it was, it was, it was that, and it felt, and, and with all four involved, because they really had uh, spent a lot of time together as characters. And I think, uh, and, and when I was writing that episode, I started to feel like this was kind of cheating, like it wasn't, there was nothing heavy about it. It was, there was certainly, they each had, they each had very specific arcs, all four of them in that, um, but, uh, I was just like, oh, this is 17 different locations. It's going to be possible to shoot. And they're just like fucking around and drinking. And then at, at a certain point... Which I, they clearly know how to do. Yeah, and, and at a certain point, I just stopped fighting that. And I embraced it. It was actually a big lesson for me as a writer. And it, it turned out to be uh, a lot of fun. And then we heard about Sunday Fun Day, I think. I don't know where. I don't know even what that is. Thought it was really, really stupid. And thought immediately Jimmy would fucking hate it. We started it, by the way, except no other imitations, because I've seen it quite a few times, haven't you? Sunday Fun Day. Oh, yeah. It's feeling that. Yeah, so it just, it just kind of went from there. And, 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 and the uh, second part, uh, I don't know if it'll be annual, I can't say for next year, but second season, yes, we're doing another Sunday Monday. And you gotta get Thomas Middleditch back for that, right? Middleditch? Yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah, that guy. Chris, that said, what do you think Jimmy's Sunday Fun Day would look like? Jimmy's Sunday Fun Day? Wow, I don't know. Reading on his own, masturbating continuously. <laughs> NCISLA episodes, <laughs> just back to back. Maybe invite someone over if he wants to. A um, little foot action. Yeah, that's, that's pretty <laughs> much it. God, that's quite a good that's answer. You, you can have that, move on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, Jimmy and Andrew's friendship is, is so great. Um, I, what do you think uh, Gretchen living with the guys is going to do to that? How is that going to change the house chemistry? Poor Edgar. He's such a good man. Um, and unfortunately, it's two to one at that point. So I think we, uh, we uh, but it, it sucks for Edgar, I think, Gretchen moving in. He's such a support of their relationship, um, and they're so abusive to him. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's hard for him, but he's, he's been such a, a wonderful support for the Jimmy and Gretchen relationship. But I think ultimately he's rooting for them, even if he never gets to sleep. And you guys, you're introducing a couple new characters in season two, right? In yeah, the future? yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, gosh, uh, I would I love nothing more than to share every single person and every single exciting piece of casting we have coming up. But we haven't, like, closed deals on most of them, and FX is sort of, um, you know, they, they want to make sure we've closed deals on them before we announce them. But uh, you broke a story today 
Uh, but it was, we have this, uh, this wonderful actress, Colette Wolf, coming back, um, uh, with whom I did a, a show on NBC that, that got canceled after four episodes before we aired. Um, and, uh, and she's coming back for a nice, uh, long arc, and um, it involves Mr. Desmond over there. So, uh, And she's, she's playing someone, she, I, she was an actress I first saw on Young Adult. She had five minutes, maybe, she was Pat Oswalt's sister, and I fell in love with her there, and it continued to, and she's absolutely awesome. And what about, can we meet uh, Paul's new flame, Amy? Yeah, we meet Amy, the uh, girl from the beer uh, chat room. Um, <laughs> And she's, we've worked with her already, but I can't say who it is, apparently. We're going to open it up for questions really quick. Uh, does anybody have a question cast? Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> We're doing this. Hi. So the question is about casting, and also how do I cast people who don't live in LA at all? Um, uh, casting is incredibly difficult. Casting broadcast pilots is almost impossible because everyone is going for the same actors at the exact same time. Uh, casting a uh, basic cable pilot is a little different because you're a little off cycle, as they call it. So, um, so certain people, you know, these guys may have been up for other pilots, but at this point they weren't. So I was able to grab them. Um, Aya has talked a little about her casting process. Chris came to me after I uh, auditioned every uh, guy in LA who kind of fit the role vaguely. He did not fit the role at all, um, but he was so goddamn skillful from the first sentence on this tape from England. I said, okay, he's now English, because I didn't write him as English, and uh, he's now really good looking. I wrote him as kind of a schlub. And um, all right, you gotta be flexible. Um, Heather, um, I, she just came to be in an audition, and uh, I loved her immediately and thought she was amazing. Desmond was on Ill, said ill-fated show, um, NBC show, and I was sad. Uh, we never got to actually put any pixels on the air, and so I wanted him back immediately. Oh, and so uh, uh, in terms of them not living here, um, they, I mean, in L.A., they didn't live in L.A., and, um, and so they, moved, they kind of came to L.A. Can I chime in on that answer? Absolutely. I just want to say I was actually, I lived in L.A. for three years, and, yeah, I got some roles here and there, but, you know, it wasn't going that great. <clears throat> and I moved back to New York, and I was unemployed and miserable. And then I booked um, an, a, a small part in an Audi car commercial, and, um, you know, that was nice. Wow, we also... <laughs> She wanted an I, I, have, I have a point. I have a point. The point is, the director of the Audi commercial referred me to the casting office of You're the Worst, and that's where I had the opportunity to audition uh, in the room with Steven. So, like, I'm just saying, if there's any actors out there, like, it's. I think it's inspirational. Also, uh, the, the Audi commercial director directed our pilot. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I think that's inspirational. I think it's like, you know, you're not working, and then you do a little commercial, and the next thing you know, you're in an awesome TV show. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Do we have another question? Um, I have a question. Um, Stephen, is Lindsay's alcoholism going to continue in season two? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, alcoholism, obviously, as you all know, um, from PSAs and. And all the movies of the week. Um, it's not not something you ever get over. I mean, once a cock hall, like, always a cock hall. Like. Say that more, please. <laughs> Sorry, chemistry. Uh, um, will it continue? Uh, I mean, uh, no. I mean, I think uh, Lindsay Lindsay has um, more important things on her mind this season. But I'm not saying in the parlance of the show, dicks won't be taken. But more than just dicks will be taken, maybe also lessons. <laughs> lessons that involve dicks. <laughs> no. Yeah, dick lessons. <laughs> Big lessons. There's the season two hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're also moving. That's a thing now. <laughs> Chemistry. Guys, <laughs> Leslie's talking. Yes, Leslie. You're also moving from FX to FXX. Is there going to be any kind of change? Is there something that, anything in the show that you won't do? 
I mean, you get you get away with a lot in FX. But is there anything that you won't do, and how will the change really change? We know. won't. Um, we won't. Act, we won't uh, film anything in the extra little space where the other X goes <laughs> at the bottom. We're sort of framing everything away from that quadrant. Um, aside from that, there's no, absolutely no difference to what we do. Well, I think that's all the time that we have. Um, thank you guys for coming out. Um, season one is currently on DVD, and if you want to catch up on You're the Worst, it should be on Hulu probably August or so. And tell all your friends to watch it, and your family. Thank you. If you learn nothing tonight, if you can, get an Audi commercial. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We want to thank our cast and producer and also Leslie Goldberg. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie.